Do you want to learn how to get more referrals through warm leads and how to think bigger and how thinking bigger can lead to bigger and greater things? Well, then this interview is for you. Today in Coaches of Content, I have another great guest. We have Justin Stoddard on today. <laughs> Justin, how are you doing today? Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> With that kind of applause, it's hard to not be smiling, you know? Yeah, our audience, they, they're always enthusiastic at the beginning of the interview, so they always like <laughs> they always like to cheer in the beginning. Yeah, if we can pull that off at the end, then I'll feel even a little bit better. <laughs> uh, guys, so um, I always like to tell my audience before we even listen to this, pause this, go to Justin's Facebook, his Instagram, uh, go to Justin. So it's S-T-O-D-D-A-R-T. Uh, I always like to – I want people to look at their content before I talk to them so they can see – because I always have people on like you who have great content, that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Everything looks great. So before you even listen to this interview, go there. Also, you can check out Justin at thinkbiggerre.com because Justin is a founder of the Think Bigger Movement slash podcast, and he has a uh, coaching program which he helps professionals receive pr uh, proven models and strategies plus the leverage to implement these models and strategies uh, so he practices what he preaches. He's a coach. He has a history of selling. He knows what he's doing. He's also an international best-selling author, a coach, a consultant, a speaker, a trainer, a husband, a father of six. I don't know how he juggles all this, but we're going to find out, right, Justin? <laughs> we are. We'll find out together because I don't even know yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on your website, you have a great photo of, um, you know, your family and your wife, and that's uh, super cool to see. It's like, you know, it, it really gives a, a view into who you are, right? Yeah. Yeah. If without them, I'd be a fraction of, of who I am. They really provide a lot of purpose and motivation. Right? I got a lot of mouths to feed, but also I want to make them proud. You know, one of the things that I've realized is that um, I don't want my kids just to hear from my words. I want them to see from my actions, how mm -hmm. to not just create success, but how to create significance. And I think there's a difference. I think one of a, the things our society focuses a lot on a lot is success, which is how does the outside world see me as? You know, like how, how, uh, how glitzy am I and um, the places I travel, the vehicles I drive. And I think at the end of the day, nobody's really going to care about that. I think people, what they are going to care about is how did you impact people's lives at a deep level? How did you change their trajectory from here to here? And uh, so I, I haven't mastered that, but I, I desire to be on the, on the course of mastery for that. And most importantly, demonstrating it to my kids as to what it looks like to, to go beyond success and really pursue and even achieve significance. That's awesome, man. You know, I, I interview a lot of entrepreneurs and coaches and it all pretty much what you just said in some way or another, they all say similar thing. It's all about like providing value, right? And coming from a place of value. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, one of my favorite definitions of value is it's uh, what you give and then subtract how much you charge to do that, that, that difference, like what mm. you, what you offer minus what you take and that difference between the two, that's value. And so whether it's on pricing your programs, whether it's on pricing, uh, you know, your products and services, there ought to always be people go back and say, I really underpaid for that. Like that was, that changed my life. Right now, we also have to balance the fact that some people will purchase things and not do anything with it. So it's, it's difficult to say it with all people because you have to have participation from both sides, right? People can't just uh, buy into coaching or, or, or program and then retire it and expect to get value out of it. So um, one of the things that we've done is really kind of alter our programs to be not just a done, like not, like not just a do it yourself, but really a done with you and done for you, which I think makes a big difference. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. I definitely, I'm always like, if I'm going to charge 100 I need to give them $200 worth because you want to give them more value than what they paid for. That's right. Yep, totally. Yeah, so I, I would definitely want to get in your programs and, and stuff like that. But I always like to start from the beginning because I, I read your bio and I thought I, the one thing I want to touch on is, you know, you had a successful business before the big crash in the mid-2000s. And in your bio, it talked about how you kind of had to take a step back because you were flipping houses and selling houses. Mm -hmm. You kind of had to take a step back and reevaluate and then pivot. Um, so I'd love you to touch on that because that kind of led to you starting um, Think Bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was a land developer and a home builder up until 2009. 
and most people can probably guess what happened in 2008, 2009 sure. that caused me to rethink that, right? I went from building, having a, a full pipeline of high-end luxury custom homes to those going away. And I had kitchen and bath remodels, fence, you know, fence building. It was like, wow, this is different. And it was, it really came down to, if I love the business of construction, then I'll keep doing this. I'll do whatever I have to do until the market comes back. Uh, and I had to do some soul searching at that point of like, do I actually love building homes? Do I actually love developing land? And the answer was no, I didn't. It was a great business. And I think sometimes we do that. We really fall in love with the results that a business can give us without falling in love with the actual message, the actual business that we're involved in. Now, sometimes, you know, we aren't, people aren't fortunate to, to, to know what that is right away. And so they've got to do some, some discovery work. But I found that when, when you can really align, this is my life's passion. It gives me more energy to talk about it and do it mm. than, than not. Um, then all of a sudden your career doesn't feel like work anymore. It really feels like a mission. And, uh, so for me at that point in my career, I realized like, I'm not really passionate about these things. And so I really sought out to figure out what it, what it was that I was passionate about. And it really came to the conclusion over a period of trial and error, over a period of really hitting my head, you know, kind of hitting dead ends here and dead ends there. It really came to the point of like, I get it. I know what I love. I love developing people. I love helping them to recognize who they are versus who they could be. Helping them to, to just get a glimpse of the potential that's inside of them, helping them to then begin to uncover that potential and live a life in pursuit of that. So that was the first thing I realized is really developing people is my thing. And then secondly, not building homes, but building businesses. I, I really have a, uh, a knack and a passion for really getting to what is the next right thing that you should be doing in your business now, and, and which is where most businesses struggle because they try and do all things at once. And, and there are many things that need to be done but there's only one thing that's the next right thing for you to be spending all of your attention on or the, the focused attention on now first. There's always the first thing you should be doing. And so helping people to realize that and then begin to take incremental steps and gain momentum, which allows them to attract other teammates, have revenue sufficient to outsource and delegate other things that need to be done, but don't need to be done by you. Long story short, developing land turned into developing people, building homes turned into building businesses. And so now I'm fortunate to have built a business that allows me to do those two things. And it, again, it doesn't feel like work. Like I love my family. As you mentioned, Zach, I've got six kids who I absolutely adore. And, uh, but when it's time to go to work, I'm not like, ah, oh, I gotta go to work. It's like, all right, let's go. This is another, another avenue of my passion, right? And, um, and it, it, it took me a long time to get here. I turned 43 yesterday. And, oh yeah, uh, I to tell you the happy belated birthday. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, it took, it took a while to get here to really figure out what it was and then be able to be in a spot where I could step out of a very comfortable, cushy corporate job to be able to pursue this full time. But I'll tell you, it was worth it. Looking back, it was worth it was worth every sacrifice to get to the point where I could pursue doing the work that I love in a business that's my own. Man, sign me up for that job. Where do I apply for this job? <laughs> you actually don't, right? You you. It. Yeah, you apply it. by doing the years of work, the stuff that you're doing right now, Zach, which you're inspiring so many people to just get out and be in conversations and, uh, you know, develop, um, like uh, uncover it by doing the work. Uh, and, and that's how you get there, right? There's, there's no magic uh, speed, like bullet train that will get you there. It's, it's typically like a long climb of dead ends and turn back around and head, no, that was wrong. And then finally, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we might have a trail here. It's a little hairy trail, a little scary trail, but it's a trail. This is it, right? And and I think that's yeah. more what it feels like as opposed to the heavens parting and you getting an elevator right up. Man, I love hearing these stories. That's why I always try to start at the beginning because it's, it's always a similar story. Like somebody gets good at something. They want to help others, teach them how to do it. They start the coaching program. And then through them helping people, it just grows and grows and grows. And they become successful, but they also change a lot of lives help people get jobs, create jobs. So it's all, it's awesome to hear like all that. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. Is it the question isn't like, what do I do? The question is always, how do I help people? Right. That's always like, who, who do I want to help and how can I help them? And once you answer those two questions, it gets a lot easier. Like, okay, who, who are my people? 
and and how can I bring a unique value into their lives that other people aren't bringing, that others aren't satisfying? And and I'll tell you, things get a lot easier once you can answer those two questions resolutely. Hmm, so right, so finding your purpose and who you're meant to help. Yeah, yeah. Who specifically? Who you want to help and how you can help them. It's just that simple, right? You just gotta just gotta do it, though. That's the hard part. Yeah. So well, I'm curious, what were your like first steps when you started Think Bigger? Um, I mean, I guess you probably already had a network built in and stuff, but when you don't have uh, proof of work or you're just starting out, because you know, I have some people who are listening to this who are just starting their coaching journey or they've been in it a little bit or trying to scale it. But I'm curious, like, what were your first steps that you took? Yeah, so I actually did not have a network in what I'm doing now. Uh, I started off, I was working for a, for, for a corporation, a, a title company, a title and escrow company inside of the real estate space. And I realized that for me to gain a voice in my industry and be seen as more than just another vendor, just another provider, that I needed to, to build some authority. And so I started a podcast. Back then it was the Think Bigger Mastermind was the name of it. And uh, I quickly pivoted. I should say within the first couple of years, I pivoted uh, to where it's Think Bigger Real Estate. That podcast has been in existence for five years. And it really, the name of my company now is Think Bigger, right? Specifically, Think Bigger Real Estate is how we operate. And uh, so the podcast became the business. And I didn't know on day one, I didn't even know on day 700, like after two years, I had no idea what business that could turn into. I know people weren't paying me to interview them. But I did realize that I was gaining value by interviewing other people, by realizing like, okay, what are the problems that my clients need to be like, need to solve? And what are other people out in the marketplace doing? And so I was kind of gathering the answers to those two questions of who do I want to serve and how can I bring value to them? And it all started from a podcast, not because I was an authority at that point, it's because I was seeking to find out how to bring unique solutions to a marketplace. So that led me then to, to having something unique that I realized in these conversations, I had something unique that I'd use in my building company, but I began to refine it. I began to teach it to other people, both on the podcast and other places, which became the book that I authored, which you'll see over my shoulder here, the upstream model. And uh, that book uh, really then set the stage for me to um, exit stage left when it came to my corporate career and uh, be in a spot where I could then really uh, step out onto my own, you know, into my own. Um, you know, my own business. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of why I started this podcast. Cause um, I have a business where we produce podcasts for people and, but I've tried to drive home exactly what you just said. Like having a podcast, great way to provide value. It's a great way to help people, a uh, great way to network. And, you know, people become fans of yours and want to do business with you before they even meet you just by consuming your content. Like I, I bet you, you get business from people who list, you know, maybe they listen to three episodes and they're like, I like Justin. He's legit. You know, I want to do business with them. Like, that's just kind of how it works, right? Yeah, I, I would say probably not three podcasts. I'll right. get regularly. I'll have uh, conversations with people that are like, hey, like I've like I've binge listened to your podcasts. I've read your book. Like, let's have a conversation, right? And still, not everybody converts. So it's you really have to see a podcast, in my opinion. Which, by the way, I believe if anybody's looking to find their voice in business, start a podcast. You might be like, well, I don't know what I want to talk about. That's exactly why you should start a podcast. You can pivot. Like I was listening this morning to one of my mentors, Russell Brunson, who talked about I how uh, yeah. he's at a different stage in his career right now. And his podcast that used to be marketing in your car, then turned into marketing secrets, is now taking a whole new pivot. It'll still be named the same, but he's now interviewing and speaking to his new buying business, like his his whole new thing, of like beyond just building click funnels. Um, and so I think your podcast can accompany you throughout your life. It doesn't have to, you don't have to know what you're talking about or know what you want to do when you grow up, right? Before you start a podcast. Like if you don't know what that is, it's a great reason to start a podcast because you start to get into conversations with people that you couldn't get to otherwise, right? You you have a platform onto which you can invite them and you can learn from them. And just learning from them creates a couple of things. Number one, you have the ability to have other people uh, teaching you so you gain knowledge at the same time you're building a network. So for me, when I realized like I've got a book inside me, which a coach helped to unlock that inside me, um, helped me to see that, I went from like nobody really knows me to 
launching a bestseller in, in the business category because I already had this built-in audience. And the podcast was the reason for that because I figured out my voice, what I wanted to talk about, how I wanted to help people. And so my book launch was much better than it otherwise would have been had I not gone through the hard work of, of, of interviewing people to really realize like, where do I fit in the world, right? Like, how can I help people? How do I fit in a competitive marketplace? So. Man, you're just, this is hitting me like a ton of brick. Cause this is pretty much where I'm at with my podcast and my journey, all this. Yeah. Um, this is great. Uh, you mentioned Russell Brunson. Are you in his mastermind? I'm not in his mastermind, but uh, I listened to a lot of his stuff. Okay. Read his books. Um, I did sign up for his mastermind once and found it, found it was not quite what I was expecting. It was a pretty crowded space. I was yeah. looking for a little, I, I knew I wouldn't for that price get like individual access to Russell other than at a small event. Um, but I don't know that they were ready when I signed up for the quantity of people <laughs> that signed up. It was at a, one of his big events. And uh, I just felt like I was in kind of, you know, one of large masses. It just wasn't quite the right fit for where I was at at the time. Um, but, but I do, I do, he, he's one of my kind of mentors that I follow in life and business. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his as well. Um, one of the first podcasts that I produced was for Krista Mayshore. Yeah. I'm probably yeah. familiar with her. And Krista, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I love Krista. She changed my life. I'm trying to get her on here. Krista, if you're listening, you know, I text her once a month <laughs> Come on my podcast. Come on. One of these days I'll get her on, but I love it. But yeah. She was in him, his, my, his mastermind. And, okay. um, she basically just says, whatever Russell says to do, I do, and it works, and that's how I got to where I am. So it's funny you brought him up. Yeah, she's blown up, too. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely, uh, you know, we talked about your background and everything. I want to talk about your book, um, The Upstream Model, and uh, how to get warm leads. Um, but when, So when did your book come out? It came out about two years ago. It'll be two years ago this fall. And uh, let's talk, talk a little bit about, like, what's in the book and, you know, how it can help people. Yeah, I'll uh... – I'll grab a copy here in case anybody's uh, trying to read what it says, the upstream model. So it was really written to the real estate industry, but I make a very kind of strong statement up front that this book really applies. The principles apply across all industries. And uh, the concept of the book is this, is that we have a choice to make, whether we go to the masses and try and sort through the masses and play the numbers game to find our next client, or we can go upstream to other professionals that are dealing with our next clients now. I'll give you an, an example. When I was a home builder, um, I, was, I was really trying to sort through the masses to find out who were my next ideal clients. It was very competitive at the time. Um, and I found that it was very centered on margins and, and, and turnaround times and stuff that was, that was becoming more and more commoditized. And my margins were getting slimmer and slimmer. But I realized that there was somebody positioned in the marketplace who was upstream from a home construction project, and it was a uh, it was a, it was an architect. And so I found that if I could approach the architect with the right strategy, the right approach, and the right long term integration strategy um, between our two businesses, that he could feed me almost as many clients as I could ever want. So rather than having to sort through the masses and and have hundreds and hundreds of prospects to get a few clients. I really had one prospect. I had one individual who could open the door to dozens and dozens of clients. So that principle is, is stayed true, right? The way that I go about building my, my business now, um, as often as I can, adheres to those principles. For example, I have, you know, um, between 30 and soon to be about 50 coaching clients that all came from one corporate customer. Right. So um, when you can find one bigger organization or person who has a need or their clients have a need, then you can position yourself to add value to that one person who opens the door for you to be in business with all of his or her clients. Right. Or his or her employees, potentially. Um, so so that's the essence of the upstream model it just allows you to work by referral, like warm markets where you're not chasing cold leads but to where you're, you're getting warm introductions, um, not because you build a massive personal sphere yourself, but it's because you go find that one person who's strategically situated upstream from, from, from what you offer to the marketplace. You add enough value to them that they want to bring you into conversations with their clients, not because it's good for you, not because they, they want to do you a favor, not because they like you. It's because it's good for them and it's good for their clients. That's why they'll do it. And that's the 
that's kind of a sneak preview into the into the strategy on how to really create long term partnerships with people that can feed you business, um, you know, as much as you'd want. Wow, yeah, that's super smart. If you can, um, that's such an efficient way to do business. Rather, you know, people are doing cold leads, cold calling, but why do all that if you can get warm leads? Um, right. And the upstream, using the word upstream, makes total sense. What you're doing, um, man, they're blowing my mind. I'm trying to think about like how to actually. So, how does one, you know, they got to buy the book, really? But how, what, like, what's an example of how you make this happen? Like you mentioned, your architect, but how would a real yeah. estate agent? like a residential real estate agent do this. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So you think about who are the people, who are the professionals? I always ask people, there's a simple five step process. The first step is who are the clients that I want to be in business with? Okay. Mm -hmm. There's, there's always an answer to that. Um, and it's like, well, it's maybe it's first time home buyers. They're buying their first home, or maybe it's people who are selling their final home and they're moving into a retirement community, or maybe it's people who are selling their first home and moving into the, their kind of step up home. You define who are the people that you want to serve and then you ask the question, who are the professionals that already have a relationship with that demographic of person, right? Let's say, for example, it's the people that are moving into a retirement community. There's other professions out there that serve kind of that senior community that already have relationships with them, right? Certain types of attorneys, certain types of CPAs, certain types of insurance agents, certain types of organize, like, you know, household organizers and, and, and not just in, in the real estate space, but just in, in general, right? And if you can find those particular professionals, let's say, for example, like a reverse mortgage specialist, right? Reverse mortgage specialists work with people that are 62 years and older. And by honing in very specifically on that particular professional, um, you are able to get access to his or her clients. Now, the next step beyond identifying not just who you want to serve, but who are the professionals is to seek a warm introduction to that professional. Because if you show up like a solicitor, you'll be treated like a solicitor. Right. So I encourage people that the, the people that are already in their network can probably lead them to a professional that they wanna be in contact with, right? So we teach a very kind of step-by-step -step model of, of how to find those people that can lead you to your ideal referrers. And then from there, there's, when you sit down to meet with these people, you're not there to pitch yourself. If the introduction's done correctly, you don't have to pitch yourself. Somebody did it for you. And it's called edification. They introduce you before you ever walked in the door, which makes it to where when you sit in that meeting, you can show up not as a vendor there to talk about yourself, but as a peer, almost as a business consultant, curious about their business and what needs they have. And then after that meeting, you're able to deliver value on their business and then eventually to their clients, which makes it to where you fit seamlessly into their client experience and have the ability moving forward to be brought up. Even though you're not there present, you're kind of there present because you've added value to their client experience to where you come up all the time. So that's like a quick, quick snapshot of the, of the five steps that we walk people through uh, in the real estate industry to help them uh, identify who those key referral partners are, those upstream partners and integrate their businesses together to where they get a steady flow of warm referrals. I think people have to keep in mind though, you have to do to even get a warm introduction. You have to do like an amazing job and provide tons of value to this person before you can even ask them introduce you to someone else, right? Yeah. And really this particular upstream partner is not a client. They're just mm -hmm. another business owner, right? But yeah, you have to do good for your clients or whatever great strategy you provide is going to be short lived when people realize that there's not actual substance behind, you know, what you say you can do. So yes, uh, at the core of all that, you have to be good at what you do. And where most professionals struggle, isn't that they're not good at what they do. They are, they just don't know how to get the word out and they run out of time sifting through the masses, playing the numbers game. Uh, when most, you know, 97% of cold leads turn into nothing and 9% of warm leads even turn into nothing in that particular year. So uh, the sorting game is real and it causes you to waste a lot of time on stuff that doesn't actually tr translate into business. Whereas an upstream partner can lead you to those clients and have you able to start to, to get warm referrals on a regular basis of pre-qualified people, right? Not from a lending standpoint necessarily pre-qualified, but, but that they're ready to go. They need somebody now. They have questions. They need answers to them. So this is a system that you developed in your own business, and mm -hmm. this is what made you become successful? Yeah, 100%. I won't, right. I won't run a business now without, without having these principles be the primary way that we go about getting business. 
Man, this is such good stuff. So, um, and do you, I feel like this could work for any industry. And you said you work not just with realtors, right? Do you work with people in all industries? Yeah, my coaching programs are designed specifically for real estate agents and real estate industry professionals, title professionals, lenders, and real estate agents. At some point, I might open up to where I work individual specifically with people who are not in these industries, but right now my focus is there. Yeah, because I've interviewed a bunch of real estate coaches and I always ask that if they think about branching out and it's like, I guess if you try to serve everyone, you serve no one. So it would make sense, you know, yeah. even if you have something that could work for anyone, uh, why you would stay in the same industry. Right. Yeah, there's a big enough um, need in our, our industry, right? Now, one of the things my model invites is collaboration, integration with other industries. So there could at some point in the near future become a, a natural parlay into coaching a different demographic of, of professionals that, that fit right in with the upstream model to, right, to where they're partnering with real estate agents. So, um, you know, that's, I think, a real possibility at some point in the future. Haven't crossed that bridge yet. Not ready to yet, but but it's it's in the back of my mind. So does your is the coaching program kind of really revolve around this upstream method? Yes, yes, it does. It really covers two parts. Um, the first part is that we actually help you build the foundation onto which you can then build a great structure. So many agents don't have their basic foundational referral systems in place to where there's low-hanging fruit in their sphere simply because they don't have some simple systems in place to nurture and to gather all of the, all of the again, the low-hanging fruit that's possible. We, we get those in place in the first five weeks. And then moving forward, we then help them to, to build on top of that by going and creating these powerful referral relationships. So we yeah, man, I've done probably like over 20 interviews and I haven't really touched on referrals and warm leads. So this has been great. I personally learned a lot. I know a lot of people will. I really appreciate you doing this. Um, yeah. as, you know, as we wrap it up, I just, I love your, your whole thing. Think bigger. I'm a big thinker. Sometimes I think too big. Um, but I feel like your upstream model is kind of leads to that too. Thinking big, like you're thinking big, yeah. you're thinking next. Like, were you always a big thinker? Like how, how did you even come up with the name? Because that's such a cool name. You know, when I first started my podcast, I had a, I had a partner and it was his idea. He said, what about the think bigger mastermind? And I was like, I freaking love that name. I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. So I named the show that realized that I really wanted to niche down into real estate. So it then pivoted to become think bigger real estate, but he gets credit for that. His name's Steve. He's been a friend of mine for a long, long time. And, uh, that's where it all started, right. Was from that. And those words just kept permeating you know, deep into my soul, really. And, and it's become much more than just business, right? People think, when they think of think bigger, it oftentimes means a bigger empire, a bigger house, a bigger, a bigger fleet of cars, a bigger harem of women. Like it's, to me, that's not it, right? Kind of like I was talking about before, that's very much success driven. And I'm all about success. It wouldn't look exactly like that, but I'm about significance. And so for me, it means to think bigger, it means to think beyond success that, success is a milestone along the path, right? Now for me being a family guy, it doesn't include some of those things I rattled off there, but it does include uh, being able to, to, to live, give and serve abundantly. So I say live abundantly. It means that I don't have to run my decisions through a money filter of, ah, we shouldn't, ah, we, we can't like, it's like, no, like do we want to, the finances are there and are in, in a position to where we can live how we want to live. The question is how do we want to live? Right? And we can live abundantly. The next one is to give. You and I both have organizations that come in front of us regularly where I love to write bigger checks than I can currently write to support that. And uh, so a driving motivation is not just to live abundantly for myself and my family, but to be able to give and give the causes I care about and to organizations that support those causes. And the last one is to serve abundantly. People that I admire most in life have the ability, even in their younger life, not just later in life, but to really go commit time or the one thing that's the most precious thing that, 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 that none of us have enough of, so to speak, is time. And so to live, give, and serve abundantly to me is a significant life. That's what Thinking Bigger is all about. And in key areas beyond just business, right? It's also family, having deep relationships with family, having a very deep spiritual life to where you really know your purpose, not just like how long I'm going to live or how long I want to live, but, but why do I live? Like, why am I here? In fact, I heard this quote this morning that Einstein uh, was asked the question, if you could if you could get the answer to one question, what would it be? He, he would, and he said, um, I would want to know um, uh, how the earth was created. 
Uh, and then he stopped and he said, no, I'd want to know why the earth was created because then I'd know why I exist. And so I think having this, um, this pursuit of why am I here, right? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And, and what happens after this gives you a more transcendent view of your life and causes you to make decisions that are more impactful to other people. And so again, having a deep spiritual life, having a, having a, a good fitness life where you're healthy and you can actually live. I think over the past number of years, we've all learned that if you're not well, nothing else really matters, right? If your yeah. body doesn't work, where are you going to live? Um, so that's important. Uh, and of course, a financial and business life that supports all of that. So now uh, those are things that, that thinking bigger all encompasses that, right? It's, it's, it's looking beyond just having a great Instagram picture in front of a fancy car with some girls hanging around it. Like that's for some, that's it. Right. And, and, and that's theirs. That's theirs. Mine doesn't look like that. And I think the people that are attracted to what I'm building, um, are like what I shared right there about a more, uh, maybe a more holistic life, more complete life that includes even a spiritual life includes really digging into the potential that's inside of each one of us. That resonates with them to some. It's like, that doesn't resonate at all. And that's cool. It's just not my tribe. Right. Uh, but those that are my tribe, they very much, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what I want to build. Not just success. I want to build significance. Significance is bigger than that. And so that's, that's my, that's my pursuit is to, is to be, be that and attract that. And I had two follow-up questions, but you just answered <laughs> you just answered both of them and more. Uh, I know our audience is loving it. This has been a great interview. <laughs> I love the tears. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, man, this has been per this has been great. Like, uh, you know, I reached out because I wanted to have a conversation with you. I'm so glad I did. I know my audience is going to love this. I really appreciate you coming on here. Um, so I just wanted to give you the the time to promote, you know, your website, your Instagram, your books, yeah. your program, whatever you'd like to promote. Yeah, no, I appreciate it very much. If so, if you're in the real estate space, I think the way that I can be the most helpful to you is to follow me on, follow me on Instagram at Justin Stoddard. And then the link in my bio sends you to what's called a referral score. And that referral score will actually tell you how much money you're leaving on the table by not getting referrals from your existing database, your existing sphere. They'll calculate that for you and we'll, and it'll, and we'll actually personalize it for you and send it right over. Uh, so it's, it's called your referral score. And you, again, you can get that in my bio from Instagram, which is at Justin Stutter. So follow me there, click the link in my bio, and that'll give you a very helpful uh, diagnostic tool on what you should be doing next in your business to unlock the amount of warm referrals that should be coming your way. So that's that's probably the first one. So if you're in the real estate industry, if not, I would say just follow me on Instagram. I put a lot of stuff on there that's not just business related, but that's family related, that's life related. And uh, I'd love to connect with you. That's a great, not just uh, let's look at each other's content. But let's have a conversation. So feel free to DM me. If I can be of help, let me know. Yeah, you have a lot of great, I was watching earlier, you have a lot of great mindset stuff too. You know, how to achieve your goals or like one of them, like three steps to achieve your goals. So guys, it just enough content for all types of people. Uh, and your podcast too, it's on all podcast platforms, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. The yeah, Think Bigger Real Estate Podcast. That's right. Yep. So so from my website, thinkbiggerre, like real estate, thinkbiggerre.com, uh, you can get, past steps. Like there's actually a search function there. You can go search up guests and, and content. And, um, but yeah, that website will be a great hub for you to, to, to really kind of tap into all the content that we have going out there on these topics. Awesome. Justin, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, this has been awesome and guys. Uh, don't forget we'll be back next week with another episode. And, um, if you want to start your own podcast, go to coachesandcontent.com. You can download my free guide. I explain how to do it. You could do it yourself. You just need someone to show you how to do it. I'd love to help you. Uh, Justin, thanks again. Got to give you another round of applause. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Right. I'm, I'm super impressed with the journey you're on and the impact you're making, not just in your own life, but in the lives of other people. So well done, my friend. You're on a fantastic path. Well, thanks. That means a lot. That means a lot. I appreciate that. All right, guys. We'll be back next week another episode.